This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV and Association for MTK Global via Zoom all the way from New York City. I'm joined by promoter, ex-fire, Dimitri Salita. How have you been keeping, Dimitri? You good? I've been okay as, as well as can be under these circumstances. Nice, nice, nice to be with you. Yeah, thanks. All the way across, all, all the, way across the pond vis-a-vis -vis Zoom. Absolutely. And I love your T-shirt. And I love your T-shirt, man. You said you said the tone and the mood straight with that T-shirt, man. That T-shirt is fantastic. Gotta love Kronk, eh? Um, Gotta love Kronk. Okay, Dimitri, uh, let, let me get straight to it. Obviously, you co-promote Jarrell Miller. Um, last weekend, reports came out that he had reportedly failed another drugs test. Um, as his co-promoter, what's your, your viewpoint on this, uh, Dimitri? I mean, what is there to say? I mean, it's obviously extremely disappointing. Uh, you know, I've been in communication with Jarrell's trainer throughout this training camp, and I know that he's putting in, has been putting in a lot of hard work and was looking forward to making a statement. But, uh, you know, we just have to wait uh, uh, to see what the Nevada State Athletic Commission is going is, is gonna to rule, and, and, and then that'll be the, those will be the steps forward. And that's exactly what, uh, what Bob Arum said, and there's really nothing more that I can add to that. Yeah, I appreciate uh, yourself and Top Ranker are waiting for Nevada. Uh, the commission in Nevada to to make a you know a step forward in this in this matter. Let's say, Dimitri, I read stuff um, months ago actually and recently that your relationship with Jarrell um, was wasn't great. Can you just tell me what happened? I know you probably can't go into everything, but what was going on with you and Jarrell? I mean, I know Jarrell since about two thousand and five. He used to go to my training camps when I used to fight in the Poconos with with. Uh, John Daly and his trainer, Harry Keith, uh, who's been with him for, for many, many years. And, uh, you know, then Jarrell has fought on my shows uh, when I wasn't even signing fighters, when I was promoting events for myself and I was just avoid, uh, promoting local fights in New York City. And I first time that I saw Jarrell as a professional was his second professional fight. I was like, my God, man, this guy is the next heavyweight champion of the world. That was in, I think, in 2010. It was in late 2010. And I told Jarrell and I told people around him, oh, this guy's going to be the champion. And whenever people would ask me, who's the best unsigned prospect in New York City? I would always say Jarrell Miller. And I was really surprised that the bigger promoters at that time, you know, just didn't snatch this guy up because I felt that he had the personality, the athleticism, the skills, the size, you know, all the ingredients to be, uh, to be a dominant heavyweight. Now, fast forward uh, many years. Uh, last year, a couple of months, I guess in May of last year or March of last year, when we had the press conference for Jarrell to fight Anthony Joshua, um, it was really special because, you know, being with him since the second professional fight, uh, which was just like 15, 20 blocks away from Madison Square Garden, and kind of, you know, foreseeing it and predicting it and being through the ups and downs from the four rounds to the sixes to the eights to the tens, the club television, to, I mean, the club shows, the television, Showtime, HBO, The Zone, really ESPN, every, everywhere there was, you know and really climb this ladder and get to, to fight for the unified heavyweight world title against, at that time, you know, uh, arguably the best heavyweight in the world in Anthony Joshua. That was just really tremendous, you know? And so, you know, I, they, I, I kind of lived up to my promise and did what I had to do, teamed up with Eddie, because Anthony, Eddie had Anthony Joshua, and it was really the best, you know, kind of the best role for him to go at that point. Uh, unfortunately, things that are outside of my control happened. Uh, and then, you know, we did a deal with Top Rank, ESPN, you know, American broadcaster, uh, tremendous, tremendous reach uh, to, to sports fans all over, you know, all over the United States, really all over the world. And uh, we we're looking, looking forward to, uh, to a great uh, comeback slash coming out party again in July. And, and, and again, something very unfortunate happened. So, uh, so, yeah, so, but, you know, there have been ups and downs to our relationships where, where you know, we're, we're communicating, we're good now. And, uh, you know, most important, most important for everyone involved, I mean, obviously for Jarrell and everyone involved in this team is to make, to figure out what, you know, what, what can be constructive, what can constructively happen for Jarrell to be able to get in the ring, you know. And, 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 and obviously, again, you know, the Nevada State Athletic Commission uh, is going to make a ruling on that. And, 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 and all we have to do is just wait and see. Of course, after the, the Anthony Joshua saga, many people called for Gerald to be banned. But as you said, you did a deal with uh, top-ranked ESPN and this was a, a new chapter moving forward for Gerald. 
is that the most disappointing aspect that you had a, a a new pathway a new chapter to look forward to and that's already kind of stopped because of course it was scheduled to fight next month and that won't be happening so he hasn't actually fought uh, with top rank or ESP and is that the most disappointing aspect so far Dimitri? I mean you know it's it's you know you just kind of can't can't even predict stuff like this. It's obvious, it's extremely disappointing. I mean, you know how, how can it not be? And it's unexpected. So you know this time we are. So there's really nothing to say. How is he? Have you spoken to him much recently? Yeah, I spoke to him. He's very you know he's disappointed. Uh, uh, and uh, you know be, because it's such a sensitive situation, I you know. Uh, there's really nothing to say. I mean, all we have to do is wait. Uh, what happens with you know with, with with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, how they interpret the tests, and and, and what the result is going to be. Did he assure you and Bob Arum and everyone at Top Rank that this situation wouldn't happen again uh, once you guys signed uh, with ESPN and Top Rank? Uh, well, I think I think you're asking me something that you read about, and everybody knows the question, the the answer to that. I mean, obviously. Um, you know, he, he trained, trained hard, and and, and wanted to really want to get back in the ring. So I, it's no one would work with Jarrell if 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 uh, and uh, you know, Bob Bram said it in several of his interviews. Uh, you know, and, and uh, so you know, so it's, it's it's a really just unfortunate situation. There's really nothing to say. I know that your job as an interviewer. Is to pull something exciting out of me, but there's really nothing to say. There's really nothing. I mean, there's nothing to say. It's not about pulling anything exciting out of you. You're just um, obviously boxing fans who are watching this will want to know why this has occurred again. And you are his co-promoter, and I have the same. I, I, I have the same question. I, I'm. I'm in. Uh, I, I'm his co-promoter, and I wanted Joel to be in the ring, you know, next week on ESPN, and. Uh, uh, and then you get this news, so it's kind of something that you least expect in light of what happened. So there's there's nothing really to say until there's until there's uh, further evidence uh, one way or the other, and the commission, uh, you know, uh, makes its decision. There's really nothing to say about only you know you can only comment on the on the facts that happened so far. So I wish it wasn't true. I wish Jarek could fight. You know, I wish that Jarrell can. I feel that he's very talented and very gifted, and and you know, and, and if this would not happen, you know, I feel that he has a great chance to, to have a great career. But I, you know, some of these things are outside of my control and outside of my knowledge. And all I could do is, um, is you know, is, is hope for the best and 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 act constructively within the the, the you know within within the parameters of, of of what I'm able to what I'm able to act. But, Just, I, but you know, yeah, carry on. Yeah, top rank, top rank, and Bob Barham is you know the biggest and the best promoter in boxing, and and, and I'm sure they're going to do their best job with, with dealing with this. Just a, a last one on this. You said you're waiting for a ruling from Nevada. Um, do you have any idea when this clarity could come about? The the time frame? Not sure yet. Okay. Well, all right, Dimitri. Well, I appreciate you can't speak on it too much because you know this is a moving case at the moment and, and as you said there's more evidence to, to come out etc and the ruling hasn't been made yet by Nevada I know they've suspended his, his uh, license but they haven't done anything else so I appreciate that is there anything you'd like to say to, say to boxing fans um, who, who are obviously outraged about this and, and are calling for him to be banned for life would you like to say any, anything on this matter to, to people watching this Dimitri? There's nothing for me to say uh, at the moment. There's, I mean, people, the great thing about sports and the great thing about boxing is that people have a chance and an opportunity to express their opinion uh, in an honest way, and that's what the people should do. And that's just the way, that's, that's, that's what makes, you know, sports what it is. It makes it exciting and attractive to fans. So obviously there's, there's, there's nothing that I can say. What I can say in a global way is that it's great to see boxing coming back. Good to see there's boxing on ESPN in the United States. Uh, I've been reading that there's shows coming back in, in the UK, uh, you know, and, and talking about my stable of fighters, things are starting to roll, and, you know, and you feel that, that things are moving in a good direction. 
And I hope that collectively as a boxing community, talking about, you know, the promoters and the fighters and all different people, we can take the, the, the responsible, healthy steps to make sure that boxing fans enjoy, uh, enjoy boxing and, 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 you know, we kind of limit exposure uh, to this COVID. And uh, with you having the Kronk t-shirt, I don't know if it's, if you wore it on purpose, but, you know, we did a deal with the Kronk Boxing Gym to be able to stage uh, fan-free boxing events, you know, for the time that this corona uh, virus lasts. So we're pretty excited about that and, uh, you know, working on those details and, and then hopefully we'll have something in the near future. No, that's pure coincidence. I had no idea about that. I wore it because I know, obviously, you used to train there, etc. But I didn't know oh, about what you just done. Yeah, so we did a deal with the Crown Boxing Gym uh, to stage uh, fan-free events uh, over there. And we're, we're currently talking to uh, some TV networks platforms. Uh, the state of Michigan hasn't opened up yet, but we're expecting some, some news on that in the coming, you know, soon. And uh, we're working on, 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 a, on a great fight card in the Crown Boxing Gym. And, you know, they say if only walls could talk, uh, you know, that boxing gym has saw some, some of the greatest fighters in some, in some incredible uh, sparring sessions that would have been fight of the year candidates. Um, you know, uh, so uh, boxing fans uh, would be able to, 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 through those pictures and through those colors and through the legendary name, hopefully they'll create a really special environment for boxing fans at home uh, to be able to really enjoy the fights beyond what they see in the ring, but also get the historical perspective of what the Crown Gym uh, has produced and is all about. And now with Hill Stewart training Tyson Fury, you know, the, the legend of the Crown Gym lives on. Do you remember much uh, from the early days of Tyson in the Crown Gym and, and also Andy Lee? Yes, I do, of course. Well, Andy Lee was there all the time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, so, so I remember Andy Lee every time, every training camp that I had the Crown Gym in Detroit. Uh, Tyson Fury, I remember when he first came, he wasn't obviously, he wasn't really wasn't really well known in, in the United States. I think he fought on Showbox a couple of times, maybe once or twice. I knew who he was because I was a boxer, you know, because I live boxing and I'm a boxing fan. Uh, but, you know, very nice, personable, humble guy. Um, you know, n nothing like, you know, then you see him doing his stuff that he does, you know, being very outspoken and flamboyant and all that. But in private, he was you know, the nicest, just a great guy. I got to say, similar to Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather in the gym, you know, for my days training with him, also very personable, very nice. But then, you know, but his personality, uh, you know, was obviously much more flamboyant and, 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 uh, and uh, I guess, uh, fan-friendly, you know, in, in many ways. But uh, it, was, it was great training with Tyson Fury. Uh, I remember how when he first came there, you know, I didn't really think much of him, you know. And then as he started to train, he got better and better every day. Like, really, I guess, you know, his first couple of days with jet lag, whatever. And then he was just so athletic. And, and the stuff that Emmanuel was showing him was just like, he was, he was like living it. It was really, he was really, you know, digesting uh, all that. And Sugar Hill, so Sugar Hill at that time was training, you know, most of Emmanuel's fighters. And they formed a relationship back then. And it was great to see that, that, uh, that that all came together, you know. Before that fight, people asked me, and you know, Sugar trains most of the fighters that I promote. Train me, uh, still give me some pad work once in a while. <laughs> uh, but uh, people were asking me like, "What do you think about the fight?" So I said, "You know what? It's 50-50, But because Sugar Hill is in the corner, uh, he's gonna make the difference with Tyson Fury. And uh, and obviously, we, you know, we saw what happened. How is how is Clarissa Shields, Dimitri? Before we go, uh, Clarissa is doing well. She's in Flint. Uh, but uh, uh, she's been doing a little bit of training. Uh, oops. I guess I stopped from the beginning. Oh, sorry. No, you're back. Yeah, Clarissa. You're yeah, back. You're yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Clarissa is in Flint. She's been doing some training. We're working on finalizing her fight date in the near future. And she's going to head to camp and, uh, uh, and get, get in shape for, 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 for junior middleweight unification against Marie Dicari. Uh, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, because Clarissa is going to unify the second weight division. She's a three-division world champion, faster than any man or woman in the history of the sport. And really exciting because I feel that Clarissa is really in the peak of her career, uh, making big moves, making history. There's a movie in development about her. Uh, and, you know, I feel like 10, 15, 20 years from now, people are going to look back at this time and, and, and feel that they had a legendary athlete. So I'm very, 
uh, fortunate to be a part of her career and to have a fighter that really wants to fight the best. From you know, she fought French and Cruz in her pro debut, uh, who's a world champion now. And her direction to me was always to fight the best. Um, and uh, you know, so the challenge has been just getting the other side to say yes. But I'm very happy that uh, Marie Decaire, who's a very good fighter, you know, she's, she's, she's very focused. She's coming to win. Uh, the fight was originally scheduled to take place on Flint, May 9th. But obviously, due to Corona, everything got postponed. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, Corusa will, will, will have a chance to showcase her world skills in the very near future. All right. Thanks for the update, uh, Dimitri, and uh, talking to IFL TV. As I said, uh, I'm sure we'll catch up soon. And uh, just take care of yourself, all right? Thanks to you as well. Thanks, man. Thank you. Bye.